Welcome to your first video tutorial on the AQA Paris Anthology. The focus of this tutorial is to look at Breathless. So before you go through this session, make sure you've actually read the text, you've made some initial notes on the camp, and you've just got a basic understanding of what it's about. The focus of this tutorial is to really explore representation. How is Paris and the writer's experience of Paris represented in the text? And we're also going to be looking at gendered language. We did this with French Milk and we're going to do the same with the text. We're thinking about this text as a discernibly female narrative. Um, and we're going to use gendered language and representation to explore the text itself. So what do I mean by representation? What I would like you to do is to actually pause the video and just write down a definition of what representation means. Try to do this without looking at your terminology list. Quite simply, representations are words, pictures, sounds, stories that stand for ideas. Think back to when we looked at iconic and symbolic signs. So think of symbolic signs, representation is very similar to that. So for example, the narrative we look at today, we want to think about how that narrative actually stands for bigger ideas, emotions and concepts. And representations massively rely on our existing um, kind of understanding of the world. And these might be cultural signs and images, essentially things that we recognise. Uh, now, not all representations will be read the same way by different audiences. And that's why it's really important when we look at the text to think about who the intended reader is and how that might impact the way the text is perceived. Let's now think about gendered language and what we actually mean by that. We have talked about it for French milk, but we've not actually gone into any specific detail. So there's just a few statements here by famous writers that help us to start to begin to understand gender and perspective. So the first one is from Mary Morris, a famous travel writer. Um, he said, women move through the world differently than men. Now, whether you agree with that or not, um, we do need to obviously think about gender and perspective and how that might influence the style and the language choices uh, in a text. And similar to this, um, Dia Burkett and Sarah Wheeler, travel writers and broadcasters, said that the emotional terrain is traditionally seen as the territory of women writers. So again, you might disagree, and I'm sure many people would, but if we think about these two statements, it is important to consider that gender is a factor that we have to bring into our analysis. And when we're writing about a text, it is important to think about the gender of the writer. For example, is the text we're looking at, Breathless, more emotional? And is it a discernibly female text? We start to bring some more language-based theory into this. We can look at Deborah Tannen's difference theory of language. Now, Deborah Tannen is an incredibly famous American professor of linguistics. Um, and her theory essentially outlines that men and women have innate differences in the style and function of their speech and writing. And therefore, it's incredibly important, according to her, that we do see language as being determined by gender. However, in contrast to that, we have the gender similarities hypothesis. And essentially, this is a way of thinking that argues for more similarities and differences in male and female speech. Now, you don't need to bring these theories into your writing and into your exam answers, but it's good to kind of think about this and to frame your thinking around gender and language. Start thinking more specifically about breathless. So this is the contextualization information we get at the beginning of the anthology. So Nancy Miller is an American academic who has written a number of autobiographical works. Breathless, an American girl in Paris, is an account of her time in Paris where she lived and studied during the 1960s. So if you haven't made notes on camp already, please pause the video now and try to add as much detail as you can to your notes. Before you do that, though, a new key term for you, or some of you might have heard of it before, um, please make a note of it. Bill Dung's Roman. Essentially, Bill Dung's Roman is a word you would use to describe a piece of writing that is coming of age. And what I mean by coming of age is that moment, that point between 
um, kind of a young adult um, and adulthood. So a point in their life where they have some form of realization, self growth, usually in that moment where somebody becomes an adult. So a good time to use for this text. So what I want you to do, make sure you've um, reread Miller's text, and then you're going to update your notes on camp if needed, and just remember the features of autobiographical travel accounts. Go back and just remind yourself of that contextual information we get at the start of the anthology. What can we actually glean from that? Um, and then I want you to find five pieces of evidence from the text that you think explore this idea of coming of age. So a reminder of the camp prompts, which you'll have in your folder. Make sure you've covered as many of those as possible and just creating a set of really detailed notes. So I don't want to go over every single question on the camp prompt sheet, but just some key things to make sure you have written down. Um, first of all, this is an incredibly personal and reflective text. Naturally, because it's autobiographical and retrospective, it is going to be very personal and reflective. But it's really important to understand that Nancy Miller is trying to understand her younger self. So she's retrospectively writing about this period in her life uh, where she was finishing her studies and she wanted to go to Paris to essentially just have a bit of freedom. Um, and in writing this part of her autobiography, um, she's trying to kind of make sense of her past and to try and understand herself. It's almost a bit like if any of you have ever kept a diary and you kind of go back and you read it and that prompts your thinking about trying to actually understand who you were and what you were like when you wrote those diary entries. Um, and she's almost kind of laughing at herself and the young version of herself. But there's parts of the text that are also quite intense and quite serious. You know, she questions why she wasn't herself in her parents' eyes. She didn't feel like she could actually be herself. And we get an idea of her quite strict Jewish upbringing. And that helps us to understand this, this strong kind of desire and longing for freedom that she has. Um, and then in terms of Bildung's Roman, the coming of age, like she's very much in this go-between stage of, still wanting to please her parents and obviously she has to rely on them they are funding we find out they're funding her fees uh, for her studies but she also wants to be an adult she wants freedom and she without sounding cliche she wants to find herself um but she's obviously struggling to do that and that's very much where we see the coming of age piece of writing uh coming to fruition there's also resentment she feels towards her parents so she feels as if she wasn't able to make her own decisions. And generally, there's a real sense of her confusion um, around who she is and the decisions that she made. And for me, that then explores this idea of like illusion versus reality. Um, she wants to be herself, but her idea of Paris is quite cliche. And she also models herself and her identity on um, this famous actress from the film Breathless. And... That to her now is almost um, laughable because she realises that she was kind of modelling her own self and experiences based entirely on a film. So all in all, when she actually gets to Paris, she ends up feeling like a foreigner and an outsider. And this um, kind of illusion, this image of Paris she's built up in her mind through the film Breathless uh, and perhaps just through schematic knowledge is actually not the reality she's met with. You should have found five pieces of evidence that very much builds this idea of Bill Dunn's Roman, a coming of age piece of writing. Um, just have me look at the first paragraph, for example, the line, um, Patricia seemed self-possessed, independent and unafraid. Three things I desperately wanted to be. Patricia looked as if she had happily traded innocence for experience some time ago. Now, that line, those two sentences are classic examples of the type of thing we see in a Bill Dung's Roman piece of writing. This longing, this desire to form an identity um, and kind of framing experiences based on other people. So just make sure you have got five examples, uh, just so it's becoming really clear that this is a coming of age piece of writing. 
start your analysis of the text, just to give you a little bit of information about the film that Nancy Miller kind of bases her um, expectations of Paris around. And she also writes about this film for quite a chunk of the text. So Breathless, um, in short, is essentially about Michael, the man you can see here. Um, he steals a car and he accidentally kills a police officer and he decides that he needs to escape to Italy and he pursues his love interest, Patricia, he's the main female character, uh, he pursues her and tries to persuade her to come with him. Um, it was released in 1960. At the time, this was an incredibly famous and popular film in America. Um, and the characters were kind of idolised, especially for perhaps teenage girls. Now, the genre of film, you might have heard of this before, belongs to film noir. And essentially, this is a style of film that is marked by a mood of kind of pessimism, fatalism and menace typically be very action-packed usually some form of thriller uh, or detective based story um, and this kind of was born out of really uh, the 40s 50s and 60s and was a very popular genre of film I'm now going to show you a quick trailer from the film and as you watch just make a few notes on what you notice about representations of Paris and also bring in things that I've talked about in terms of film noir as well. Okay, so there you go. What fun, everyone. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, hopefully you've made a few notes there on Paris being presented as a place full of excitement. Clearly, there's this love story in the film as well. Again, that links to this idea of Paris being this incredibly romantic city. And you can also see how the film fits into the genre of film noir. Um, it's kind of very broody, pessimistic, uh, menacing in places and very action packed as well. So this is the film that the writer uh, really focuses on in the first half of the text. So you should have already made some brief annotations. This is intended now to guide you and to give you a bit more of a focus. And also just to direct your thinking around gendered language as well as representation. So for lexons and semantics, think about what words does our female author, Nancy Miller, choose? Does she focus more on description than action? And how intimate is her use of pronouns? In terms of grammar, look at the punctuation that she uses. Is it more emotionally loaded? Do you see excessive exclamatory mode, for example, or a wider variety of sentence moods as well as sentence modes? Is less left unsaid or is she very uh, transparent and very open with us as the text receiver? When you think about discourse, how does her narrative develop? 
Um, are they more tangential? So is it slightly erratic? Does she divert away from purpose? Um, that might not be surprising. This is autobiographical. So she might delve into certain memories in more detail than others. Think about pragmatics. Is the subject matter more personal? Does it make any reference to her gender? Think about her own unique experience. And then for phonology, does she use certain sounds more often to convey moods? So this is just a starting point. Pause the video and you should be spending about 30 to 40 minutes analysing the text and using this as a guide. I've made a start on just annotating the first two paragraphs of the text and I just want to use this as an example of how you can build your annotations uh, using this as a guide and just working your way through the language levels. So first of all, I just went through and I noticed a pattern of lexical choices that focus more on description and I think the style of the lexical choices is discernibly female. Words such as quintessential, nourished, um, happily traded, infinitely desirable, I think are particularly feminine in style and also very emotionally charged as well. Moving on to grammar, I noticed that the sentences are particularly long and there's a frequent use of embedded clauses. And perhaps that is a part of Nancy Miller's desire to really share lots of personal details and also just her desire to explain in detail as well. In relation to discourse, just a few things that I noticed. I noticed she very much frames her narrative through the film, Breathless. So notice in the first paragraph, she mentions her boyfriend. And then in the second paragraph, uses the comparison of the boyfriend in the film. And this links as an example to Bill Dung's Romans, this idea that she's trying to make sense of her life. Uh, by kind of comparing it to what she knows and she's using that to kind of navigate her way through um, adolescence and her movement into adulthood. Then pragmatics. Um, I just noticed here that there's a real focus on her identity as a woman. So when she is talking about um, the actress in Breathless and the words that she's using, self-possessed, independent, unafraid, uh, although, yes, she's describing Patricia in the film, this is actually very much about who she wants to be as a woman. Um, and also notice the female pronouns used as well. So that's just to give you an example. Please use this as a guide, uh, like I said, about 40 minutes of your own analysis. So now you've made annotations of the text, just some kind of add-ons really. Um, what I would like you to do is to try and find examples of and then annotate the effect of the following devices. So French lexical borrowing. And again, think about why Nancy Miller would be including that. Uh, short syntax, parenthesis, so the use of brackets, asyndetic listing, a sequence of emotional lexical choices, colloquial exclamation, a sequence of exclamatives, juxtaposition, examples of high degrees of literariness, and direct references to gender. So try and find two to three examples of each, and most importantly, thinking about the effect. Go back to what we talked about at the start of the tutorial in terms of gendered language, and also seeing this text as a discernibly female narrative. So once you've done that, one final task and really revisiting where we started. I want you to look at these two statements, write them down, and then create a list of five quotations from the text that you think could be used to support each. The first statement is breathless is a discernibly female representation of Paris. And the second, the narrator's experience in the text is too personal to be an accurate depiction of the city. So start gathering some ideas on those statements. Like I said, try and find five quotations to support. You might also find quotations that could potentially challenge these statements as well. Great. So that concludes our study of Breathless. Please let me know if you have any further questions about the text and well done for your work.